Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Why, hi there, my name is Ron Jucka, and of course I'm going to sneeze the second I started the stream. How are you? It is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021, live. We are playing the games of August 26th, 1949, and tonight, or this afternoon, we find ourselves in Cleveland, Ohio, for the Yankees and the Indians. It's one versus two in the American League, and the Yankees somehow have gotten better. We'll get to that in a moment. The Yankees come into this one 77 and 45. They have clinched a winning season as this is game number 123 for them. They have 31 left. The Indians come in at 67 and 54. Not a bad year at all. They're going to win 90 games. Oh, maybe 85 games. This is game number 122 for them. Al Benton. Five and six on the year, making a rare start for himself against Vic Rashi. And so three straight noons of baseball starting right now. As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Baseball Replay 1949. Today from Municipal Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie in Cleveland, Ohio. It is the Cleveland Indians and the New York Yankees. And today's game is brought to you by... DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, not all one word, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. You're not waiting for noon. Play ball. It'll be 9 a.m. for you the next three days. So the Yankees and Indians, no G? There's no game Friday because we were busy. And I had terrible allergies all last week. That's a story all into itself. This is from August 26th. And Al Benton gets a start for the Indians. This is actually his eighth start of the year. He is five and six with five saves and an ERA of 368. 38 years old, a fastball pitcher, 81, and a standard pitcher. And so this is the game that you wouldn't have seen on Friday if we weren't overwhelmingly busy. Against the Yankees, he's made four relief appearances. This is his first this is his first start. Don't say that fast. He's gone six and a third innings against the Bombers. Four hits, an unearned run. He's walked three and struck out one. So a one and one record and two saves and no ERA. His last appearance was against the White Sox on the 21st. So five days rest, a clean inning. His last start came against the Tigers on the 16th. He went nine innings and somehow got a loss despite only giving up three runs. Overall, 78 in the third inning, 74 hits. Has not a lot of home run. How about that? He's given up 37 runs, 32 total. He has walked 36 and struck out 13. And here's a lineup the Yankees will put up against him. Jerry Coleman leads off at second base. Phil Rizzuto at short will bat second. Gene Woodling in left will bat third. Joe DiMaggio cleans up in center field. Tommy Henrik moves back to right field. And he'll bat fifth. And the reason why, the Yankees got Johnny Mize from the New York Giants. Would you believe that? He'll play first and bat sixth. Bobby Brown at third will bat seventh. No Yogi again for this one. Charlie Silvera behind the plate bats eighth. And Vic Rashi, who should throw about 135 pitches, is on the mound. Yeah, yep. Al probably will give up a home run today. Weather, by the way, 79 degrees and clear. Winds blowing off the lake left to right at 14 miles an hour. Defensively for the Indians, Dale Mitchell is a 6 and a 4. And left, Larry Doby and Woolworth player, a 10 and a 5 in center. Bobby Kennedy, a 4 and a 9 in right. Ken Keltner is a 4 at third. Louis Boudreau, the manager, is a six at short. 
Joe Gordon, a 5 at 2nd. Mickey Vernon, a 10 at 1st. And Hegan is a 7 and a 7 behind the plate. Benton is a 2 range and a 1,000 fielding percentage. So with all that, again, three straight days of noontime baseball starts right now. Coleman steps in at 286. Five triples, 20 doubles, two homers, and 46 RBI. And Coleman slaps that one on the ground. Boudreaux by the bag at second, over to first, one out. We've talked about before the scenario for a National League playoff, a best of three that would start in St. Louis and then go to Brooklyn. The American League would be just coming off a one-game playoff in 48, Cleveland and Boston at Fenway Park. Here's Rizzuto, fell at 289, six homers and 69 RBI. Benton deals. And there's a ground ball to Boudreaux in the hole over to first, two out. I don't know how they determined it in 1948, whether it was a, I think it was a coin flip. If the Yankees were to fall apart, actually, they play four more times, and the Yankees haven't won the season series yet. It's 10 8 in favor of New York. So I can't even tell you where that game would be. Cleveland, by the way, won the game on the 25th. Here's Woodleg, 310, a homer, and 36 RBI. Ball four. So the first walk from Benton, and then I'll bring up DiMaggio. Joe at 369, 10 homers, and 39 RBI. Here's a fly ball right center field. Doby moves over and makes the catch. And that will retire the side. No runs, no hits. The Yankees leave on a runner. Half an inning in the books. Yankees nothing. Here come the Indians. I'm not sure we've had the Springfield rifle. Mr. Rashi on the stream. He is 14-10 with an ERA of 396. This is his 29th start of the year. Only 30 years old, fastball pitcher at 85, and does not feature the ground ball nor the fly ball. This is his sixth start against the Indians, by the way. 42 innings, 36 hits, 15 runs, 12 earned, 16 walks, and 14 strikeouts. He is 3-2 and two against the Tribe with an ERA of 2.57. The righty's last pitch against the A's on the 21st, so he's on full rest. A loss. Eight in the third innings, 12 hits, five runs all earned. He has walked, walked three in that game and struck out one. So overall, 222 and two-thirds innings. 219 hits, 16 dingers, 108 runs. 98 earned. He's walked 89 and struck out 101. Here's the lineup he'll face. The manager, Lou Boudreaux, leads off for Cleveland at short. Dale Mitchell in left will bat second. Joe Gordon, who subbed the channel on YouTube, will bat second and or bat third and play second. Larry Doby cleans up in center field. Mickey Vernon at first will bat fifth. Ken Keltner, who is not on Joe DiMaggio's Christmas card list, is at third and will bat sixth. Bobby Kennedy in right field will bat seventh. Mr. Hegan behind the plate goes eighth, and Al Benton threw 15 pitches in his half of the first inning. He'll bat ninth. Gene Woodling is a three and a three in left. DiMaggio a ten and an eight in center. Tommy Henrik back in right field where he belongs, a three and a five. Bobby Brown is a four at third. Phil Rizzuto a ten at short. Jerry Coleman, a four at second, and the newly acquired Johnny Mize is a two at first with a 980 fielding percentage. Charlie Silvera again behind the plate. He's a four and a five, and Rashi is a good fielder. He's an eight with a 985 fielding percentage. Boudreaux at 296, no homers, and 49 RBI. 
Rashi deals, and Boudreau sends out one to center field. Back goes DiMaggio, but he'll make the catch at the base of the track. One out. Brings up Dale Mitchell at 3.03. 11 triples. He had 23 in real life. A homer and 44 RBI. Pitch from Rashi. And there's a ground ball to Coleman in the hole over to Mize. Two out. I want to say we're doing the Cardinals tomorrow. They have a one-game lead over Brooklyn, by the way. Joe Gordon, who loves the Yankees. 275, 17 homers, and 73 RBI. So after today, just three more games between the Yankees and the Indians. Gordon in the left center field. DiMaggio runs over and makes the catch. And that will retire the side. Cleveland goes down without putting anybody on after one. No score. So Hendrick. Go Tribes, Big Clue says. Hendrick, Mize, and Brown to face Benton here in the second. Tommy at 285, 33 homers, and 96 RBI. And Tommy pops this one up. Boudreaux battles the Sun one out. So Johnny Myers is not making his Yankee debut. He is 0 for 9. And I wonder who, if that was a release job or a trade. With New York in the regular season, well, at least in the Bronx, 6 for 23 with a homer and 2 RBI. Betton deals. Mize hits a ground ball base hit left side. And that's the first Yankee hit. So here's Brown at 331, two homers and 36 RBI. So you wonder, pre-1996, or 97 rather, when interleague play came about, if you've never played in one of, you played in one league and not the other, I wonder what the adjustment would be I suppose St. Louis and Philadelphia, you would know, because the Browns, Cardinals, Phillies, and A's all shared their respective parks. But Mize is a career National Leaguer. He never would have played here in Cleveland or Detroit or Boston, for that matter. Remember, the Red Sox and Braves didn't share a facility. Pitch to Brown is a pop-up or fly ball right field. Kennedy moves over in the right center, makes the catch. Mize goes back, and there's two out. And remember, in real life, the Yankees are in the middle of a, an extremely tight pennant race. I mean, this is going to be easy for New York, although the lead is nine and a half now. But you just kind of have to wonder... You know, right from the frying pan into the fire. Here's Silvera, Charlie at 297 with 14 RBI. Benton's pitch runner on first. is a ground ball to Gordon by the bag at second. He'll take it to the Benton. No, he underhands it to Boudreaux, rather. And now, well, no, he under walked it himself. So no runs a hit, and they don't leave a runner on. After an inning and a half, no score. So it'll be Dobie, Vernon, and Keltner. Doby at 275, just eight homers and 50 RBI. The Giants sold Mize across the Harlem River for $40,000. Mize would play a big role on that 50 team, if I remember correctly, too. So, so the Giants got some cash, and the Yankees got a first baseman. Rashi starts the second with a fly ball to right. Henrik coming in. And to make the catch, one out. Here's Vernon, Mickey at 3.04. 13 homers and 69 RBI. Here's a pop-up right side. Coleman and Mize. Coleman will go on the grass in the outfield. And that will... Did that drop? It did! Coleman and Mize, we just talked about Mize not being used to playing in the American League. He and Coleman collided. 
And Vernon gets the base hit. Here's Keltner. Can it 233? Seven homers and 29 RBI. Ah, yes. The Yankees and the Indians at Municipal Stadium when the green dirt would actually become grass. Once in a great while. So Keltner, one out. Vernon on first. Rashi throws to first. Vernon is back. And Keltner strikes out. He looked at a 1-2 on the outside corner. And there's two out for Bob Kennedy. Bob, again, he could be auditioning for a game show host with those looks. 279, 8 homers, and 51 RBI. You thought the dirt was the, in the visitor's dugout. Actually, in the 60s, it's probably the only place where the grass was there, Brad. And throw to first, Vernon back. There wasn't a lot of grass on this field. Pitch to Kennedy. There's a ground ball to short. Rizzuto underhands it to Coleman, and that will retire the side. The Indians get a hit and leave a runner on. After two, no score. So Rashi, Coleman, and Rizzuto to face Benton here in the third. Vic at 225, no homers, and 5 RBI. Benton deals. Here's a ground ball foul of first base side, and the count goes full. 3 and 2. And Rashi draws the beer league walk. Would you believe that? My goodness. So you walk the pitcher to lead off the third inning. Now I'll bring up Coleman. Jerry's 0 for 1. Benton, 37 pitches for his first nine. Two innings plus. A hit and two walks. Pitch to Coleman is a ground ball up the middle. Boudreaux underhands it to Gordon for 1. Over to Vernon. And it's 6 4 3. Two out. And that'll bring up Rizzuto, who's 0 for 1. <laughs> I saw that, and I wasn't sure if you were going to go politics or game shows. Do you think Kennedy asked teammates to name that tune the organist plays between innings? <laughs> that was Tom Kennedy, but yeah. <laughs> I can name that in four notes. I wonder if anybody got stupid enough to ever do that. On one note. Boom! The 1812 Overture. Right you are for $25,000! <laughs> Pitch to Rizzuto is a liner in the left field. Mitchell's gonna dive! And can't... No, he made the catch! He made the catch! Got the grass stain, but he was worth it. Yankees go in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. Bottom of the third, no score. So Jim Hegan, Al Benson, and Lou Boudreau to face Rashi here in the third. Hegan at 226. Five homers and 40 RBI. Pitch to Hegan. There's a ground ball to short. Rizzuto. Over to first, one out. So here's Benton. Al is the very definition of why you need a designated hitter. He is 0 for 22. He has grounded into three double plays and four strikeouts. Oh, Kathy Lee. Yep, the La La girl. That's what Frank liked about her. Mm, la La La. Pitch to Benton is a ground ball to Rizzuto and a played fill. Benton's going for two. So it went under his glove and it kicked off and Woodling and DiMaggio couldn't get there. So, a two-base error, and that'll bring up Boudreau, who's 0 for 1. So, Rashi, 32 pitches. Two in the third innings. 
a hit and a strikeout. She was, I believe, Kathy Lee Epstein growing up, but she was married. So I believe when the show was on, she was Kathy Lee Johnson. And that's not the type of things you'd hear about on a Fortnite stream. Runner on second. Boudreaux up the middle. DiMaggio going way back there. And Boudreaux has hit this one off the wall. Benton will score. Boudreaux is going to hold at second with his 21st double of the year. And it's one nothing Cleveland. And that will bring up Dale Mitchell. So the cheap error, the pitcher... And Benton scores his first run of the year. one nothing Indians here in the one out, bottom of third. Cleveland Stadium cheers. Here's Mitchell. There's 70 you're watching live. That would be, no, and actually in 49, they drew a million and a half, didn't they? Pitch to Mitchell. Is a ground ball base hit right side. Boudreaux will hold. Oh, will hold. Well, one out will send him. Well, round third, Mitchell will try for two to throw to Silvera, not in time. Yeah, the Ooh, and Boudreaux somehow got hurt. It's not saying that he got Doesn't say how he got hurt. But you see the eye up there on the top of the lineup, which means that he got hurt on the tag, must be. Here's Gordon. He's 0 for 1. 2 nothing Indians. Now Gordon with a 7-game hitting streak. Yep, the Yankees will be playing the defending world champions. The wind has shifted around now out to Lake Erie. 12 to left center. Pitch to Gordon. In the right center field. DiMaggio running a long way. And so is Henrik. And Tommy makes the catch. Mitchell goes to third without a throw. Two out. So here's Doby. Larry is 0 for 1. Ashy deals. And Doby strikes strike out. Strikes out. Mm. So we swung on and missed, and that will retire the side. However, the error is costly. Two runs, two hits, and one error. After three, Lou Boudreaux's feeling fine after digging his ankle against home plate. Two nothing Indians. So Woodling, DiMaggio, and Henrik. Woodling walked his first time up. How can the Tribe make that up? A 10-game gap in the standings if they only play the Yankees three more times? How can you stop the rain from falling down? And maybe more importantly, how can you mend a broken heart? Pitch to Woodling is in the shallow left field. Boudreau on the grass and Lou makes the catch one out. La 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 la. La 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 la. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh. Hmm. Okay, Statler. The Reds, by the way, are 47 and 76. And the Cubs' elimination number is two. They've lost six straight. Cardinals have a one game lead over the Dodgers. They're both playing 500 baseball. And the magic number for St. Louis is 32. Giants five and a half back. The Phillies nine and a half back. And the American League, the Yankees' magic number is 24. They have a nine and a half game lead over Cleveland, who's won four straight. The Red Sox are 13 and a half back. Detroit playing well. You'll see the Red Sox and Tigers soon, by the way. Washington has fallen off the cliff. They're moving to Montreal. It's not raining. It's 81 degrees and clear. 
And you mend it with Theo Epstein? Well, Terry Francona helped, too. DiMaggio is 0 for 1. There's a ground ball to Keltner. Over to Vernon. And there's an out. I suppose if the Yankees are going to stumble into the playoffs, the Red Sox have to help. Here's Hendrick. He's 0 for 1. Benton winds and delivers. And there's a line drive to center. Doby will make the catch. And that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the fourth. 2 nothing Cleveland. So Vernon, Keltner, and Kennedy to face Rashi here in the bottom of the fourth. Mickey singled his first time up. And there's a line drive to Coleman. And Jerry gets the glove up to make the catch one out. Here's Keltner. He struck out his first time up. For Rashi, he has two in the ball game. And now he's got three as Keltner swings and misses at a rainbow curve. Two out. So Kennedy is 0 for 1. Named that tune in five notes. And told you that the password was fun. Struck him out. He got him to swing and miss a 2-2 fastball and that will retire the side no runs no hits no errors we've played four at municipal stadium it is two nothing cleveland so johnny mize got his first american league hit his last time up with a single the lone hit for the yankees in the ball game you'll take 70s game shows for 500 okay Hmm. Hmm. Pitch to Mize. I got to think about that. In the right field. Kennedy will come over. And make that catch in a split second. Here's Bobby Brown. He's 0 for 1. Okay, I don't have to. That's on. trying to think. Actually, I just gave you a 70s game show. All right. What was Alex Trebek's first American game show? Pitch to Bobby Brown is a fly ball to left field. Mitchell will watch that one go foul and somebody from Akron made that catch. The count is 0-2, one out. As you all go to Google and figure it out, right? Pitch to Brown. There's a fly ball, left center field. Larry Doby will track it down. Two out. No, not match game. And no, it's not high rollers. Although, he did that one twice. Uh, concentration was not his first game show. He was very good in that, though. And his model was, was Mark Goodson's daughter. Talking about press, no pressure there. Here's Silvera. Charlie's 0 for 1. There's a line drive foul, third base side. And the count is two balls and two strikes. Was not card sharks. Well, he's from Canada, so he had a number of those. Alex Trebek has something in common with Ozzie Smith. They both hated Marv Albert. And since it was since Tribe Fan asked for the five hundred dollar question, it's a hard one. So Vera in the left field, Mitchell going back to the track to make the catch against the wall, and that will Retire the side halfway home on a Tuesday afternoon. The wind's now blowing out to the left at 19. We'll see if you guys can figure this out right after this.
<laughs> Name that Zed. <laughs> that would be Alex Trebell on SCTV. Um, you joined us late. Here's how we got here. Louis Boudreau doubled home Al Benton, the pitcher. And Cleveland took a one nothing lead in the third. Then Dale Mitchell singled home Boudreau to make it 2 nothing. So Vic Rashi, four innings, three hits, two runs. Only one earned. He struck out four. And Al Benton's throwing a one-hitter. It's walked two, but he is throwing a one-hitter. I'll give you a hint. Did Alex play quarterback for the Packers? No. Aaron Rodgers did a really good job as a host, by the way. Jim Hegan is 0 for 1. We'll give another half inning there. I don't think an episode of that show survives. The first game show for Trebek sounds like, uh, yes. Ozzie Smith's nickname. Alex is the narrator on the shuttle bus up to the Hearst Castle at St. Simeon. So, two of you've got it. Pitch to Hegan. Just say the name of it. In the left field. Back goes Woodling in the corner. One out. That looked gone off the bat. And Woodling had to make a great catch against the wall. Nope. Gambit was Wink Martindale. But Big Clue gave you a big hit. So Benton scored. He's over one. He reached on the air. I would be cheating. And that's the fifth strikeout for Rashi as Benton swings and misses at a curve. Well, I'll do this in concentration style. Odds are you would be Ozzy Smith. This is his nickname. So figure that one out, and you have the name of the show. Boudreau is one for two. Lou has doubled, driven in his 50th run, and scored. Rashi threw 18 batters, 71 pitches, four and two-thirds innings, three hits, and five strikeouts. And Boudreau punches that one in the right center field. He's digging for two. DiMaggio's throw into the infield is not in time, and that's Boudreau's 22nd double of the year. So a two-out double, and that'll bring up Dale Mitchell, who was one for two. He has singled and drove in the other Cleveland run in the third. Mitchell, ground ball to second. Boudreau goes to third. Coleman throws to first. Mize on the bag, two out. Or three out, rather. No runs, a hit, no errors. After five... Cleveland 2, the Yankees nothing. And so it'll be Rashi, Coleman, and Rizzuto to face Benton here in the sixth. The name of the game, if I said it Jeopardy style, what is the Wizard of Odds? But high rollers is how I remember them for. for. And if you said battle stars, wow. Someone skipped way too much school in the early 80s for that. Rashi walked his first time up. Lines this one to center. Dobie will dive. And can't make the catch. Rashi's going for two as that got past Dobie. And for Vic, that's his third double of the year. And for Rashi, yep. Always good to have the pitcher get the hit. Alan Thick helped him get the job. Alan also from the Ontario, although Alec pretty much grew up in the Ottawa Gatineau area. Got Mr. Trebek his big break on American television. Jerry Coleman's 0 for 2. He's grounded into a double play. Benton threw 18 batters, 69 pitches. Five plus innings, two hits, and two walks. Hegan goes out to talk with Benton. Al now from the stretch. He drops a bunt. Hegan throws to first. Gordon will cover, and it's 2 4 on the sacrifice, and Rashi moves to third for Rizzuto, who's 0 for 2. The 
playing for the bunt, Keltner and Vernon. Benton's pitch. There's a ground ball to third. Keltner throws to first. Looks Rakshi back. And Vernon is there. Two out. And that'll bring up Gene Woodling. Gene is 0 for 1 with a walk. Match game was my favorite show growing up. Pitch from Benton. Woodling draws the walk. So Rashi danced down the line. That's the third walk from L. And then I'll bring up DiMaggio, who's now the go-ahead runner at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Benton's pitch. Snap throw to first, and Woodling is back. Pitch was a ball up high, and Hegan just trying to shake it up. Pitch to DiMaggio is a long drive to left, and the Yankees lead this game 3-2. to two. So DiMaggio silences the crowd here in Cleveland. He just hits an absolute howitzer for his 11th of the year, and the Yankees have a three spot on the board. Man, that ball was crushed. And, yep, that's the first home run given up by Benton on the replay. He Scott Howard called it in the pregame show. Jamie says the best part of being sick and missing school is watching all the game shows. Absolutely. Pressure luck. That was great. Match game. Henrik is 0 for 2. And Tommy grounds that one to Gordon. Throws it over to Vernon for the out. So, but the Yankees get three runs on the three-run blast by Joe DiMaggio. We go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 3-2 New York. There's a funny cartoonist on Facebook. And he does take up, takes off take offs on certain things. Piles is last name. I think it's Nathan Pyle. That's not the answer to the D. Scott's trivia question. And uh, get to stay home. You know, the whole thing is the kid is sick and gets to stay home and gets to watch TV. And the, he labeled the show the cost is correct. And tried fan answer the trivia question. Who was the first host of Jeopardy? Art Fleming. Pitch to Gordon who's old for two. Popped up. Rizzuto by the bag at second. One out. Here's Larry Doby who's 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Rashi is with 5 and now has a one run lead here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And make it six as Doby looked at an 85 mile an hour fastball. So two out for Mickey Vernon. Someone is vacuuming next door. Mickey is one for two. And Don Pardo was the Johnny Gilbert. Yep. Who was the first host of concentration? Hugh Downs. Pitch to Vernon. Ball four. So Rashi. Missed high and away on a 3-1. Silvera said a few words. And now bring up Keltner, who struck out twice. Don Parra was also the first announcer on The Price is Right. Can you tell me who the first host of The Price is Right was? The new one started Labor Day 72. Pitch to a throw to first. Vernon back. Maybe. Yes. And Tribe fan has it, and so does Mr. Forsberg. Bill Cullen. Some of those are on YouTube. Those are a hoot. Those are an absolute hoot to watch. Pitch to Keltner. 
Kenny this time sends it into right center field. DiMaggio going back will make the catch, and that will retire the side. No runs, no hits, no errors. The Indians strand a runner after 6-3-2 New York. And, of course, Don Pardo for a long time, except for one year, was the voice of Saturday Night Live. Here's Johnny Mize. He's one for two. Johnny's got himself his first American League single. Sends this one into right field. Kennedy comes in, rides a Schwinn for the out. Now, it was, in fact, the last few years that Pardo did it. He actually did it from his home in Phoenix area, the Phoenix area. Here's Brown. Bobby's 0 for 2. There was one episode when he had laryngitis and couldn't do it. And so what they did was they had Daryl Hammond, who's now the current announcer for SNL, do it in Pardo's voice as an impression. And hardly anyone noticed. That's pretty good. Pitch to Brown. Got him. First strikeout. An 0-2 just below the belt on the fastball. Here's Silvera. Charlie is 0 for 2. See, these are the type of tangents that I get comments about on YouTube. Silvera hits a hard ground ball to first. Vernon to the bag, and it's stretch time. Yankees 3, Indians 2. And on today's episode of the 22nd century, eventually the CGI of real people and their voices will be so good we can bring back anybody. But would we want to? Here's Kennedy. Bob is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Rashi starts the bottom in the 7th with a fly ball to left center. DiMaggio reaches over and makes the catch one out. Jim Hegan is 0 for 2. I think that would be kind of creepy. You go to a game show, you know, a new one, and you're half asleep, and it's Johnny Olson for Strip Poker, a Fremantle television production. You know, that would kind of spook people out, don't you think? Egan's 0 for 2. He laces this one in the left center field. That's going to bounce all the way to the wall. He's going to have two. That's a double, and that's his 16th of the year. And with one out, Benton is going to square. Al's pitch count-wise is fine. He's only allowed three hits, three, three, and one for the Yankees. They've left two on. The Indians, two runs, five hits, and no errors. And they've left on four. So Mize and Brown play for the bunt. Benton will square. Silvera picks it up after it rolls foul. Let's not forget you bet your life. Someone's supposed to be bringing that one back. Count is 0-2. Benton will bunt again. Was there ever a better straight man on a game show than George Fennerman for Groucho Marx? Not only have we lost the Fortnite crowd, I think we might even be in the Geritol generation of murder she wrote with this. Benton squares again, and that one will roll. Fair ball. Silvera picks it up, throws to Coleman, and he got the bunt down. He's going to move to third. So two out in the tying run on. Third base for Lou Boudreau, who is two for three. He has doubled twice. Driven in his 50th run and scored his 43rd. 27 batters deep for Rashi. A hundred pitches, six and two thirds, five hits. He has walked a man and struck out six. Hegan, the tying run on third. Pitch to Boudreaux. 
And Lou sends that one into left center field, but Woodling will grab that one, and that will retire the side. The wind has died down, by the way, eight miles out the center field, 82 degrees. We go to the eighth inning, no runs a hit, and the Indians leave a runner on. It's the Yankees three, the Tribe two. So Rashi will face Coleman, or, or rather Benton will face Rashi, Coleman, and Rizzuto. Rashi doubled, scored, and what? Canadian game shows were cheap. I watched Jim Perry's classic definition, and it was not the high stakes that Sale of the Century was. Pitch to Rashi is a ground ball to short. Boudreaux. Over to first for the out. No Zarly Zalapski today. Here's Coleman. He's 0 for 2. Grounded into a double play. And for those of us who remember watching Hockey Night in Canada when it was an 8 o'clock start, to watch Front Page Challenge on CBC. Oh boy. Coleman is 0 for 2. And is grounded into a double play. 27 batters deep for Benton. 101 pitches. 7 and a third innings. 3 hits. His only blemish was a 3-run shot to DiMaggio. He walked 3 and struck out 1. Pitch to Coleman is a ground ball right back to Benton. Over to Vernon for the out. So 2 away. And now I'll bring up Rizzuto who's 0 for 3. It'll be Mitchell, Gordon, and Doby, the heart of the order for the Indians in the bottom of the eighth. Fifth Estate, that's still on. That wasn't a game show, though. Or was it? I'm trying, no, I got that confused with W5. No, Fifth Estate was a game show. No, it was. It was CBC's news magazine. CTV has W5, and CBC had the fifth estate. And if you're watching this in Georgia, we're sorry. Pitch to Rizzuto. Ball four. So Benton with his fourth walk. Rizzuto, a 3-1 outside and low on the fastball. And that brings up Woodling. DiMaggio on deck. Gene is 0 for 1. He has walked twice and scored once. And there's a liner in the center field. Doby rides the Schwinn. He'll make the catch to retire the side. So no runs, no hits, no errors. The Yankees have left on only three. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's 3 to 2 New York. So Mitchell, Gordon, and Doby. Dale, one for three. He has singled and driven in a run. There's a ground ball to second. Coleman over to first, one out. DiMaggio, Henrik, and Mize for the Yankees in the ninth. Joe Gordon is 0 for three. There's a fly ball to right. Henrik comes in, two out. Rashi, a 21-game winner in real life, looking for win number 15 on the replay. Here's Doby. He has struck out twice. He's 0 for 3. He laces that one up the middle, right to the waiting arms of Joseph DiMaggio. So the Indians go in order. No runs, no hints, no errors. To the ninth we go in Cleveland, 3-2 New York. So DiMaggio, Henrik and Mize to face Benton. Joe, it is 11th of the year in the sixth and has now driven in 42. That's a base hit up the middle, pass to Diving Gordon, and Doby will throw it back in. Wifey's going to work. We're having spaghetti tonight with Classico Italian Sausage Sauce. Should you get for letting me do the shopping? Henrik is 0 for 3. That's a base hit up the middle. That went over the bag at second, and that's only the fifth Yankee hit. 
Now bring up Mize. Johnny is one for three for the single. Popped up Gordon on the grass. Infield fly rule is called one out. So DiMaggio on second, Henrik on first for Bobby Brown. Yankees could use an insurance run here. So for three with a strikeout. Brad was so sullen after the DiMaggio three-run blast, we haven't heard from him since. Brown, ground ball to first. Vernon might be two. Goes to Boudreaux for one. Snap throw back to Vernon, and they turn it. How about that? 3-6-3, three, three, and the Yankees are done. No runs, two hits, no errors. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's almost cardiac time here, boys and girls. It's 3-2 New York. So here's Vernon. It'll be Vernon, Keltner, and Kennedy. Mickey has singled and walked. So one to tie and two to open up a whoop-ass whoop case of Maldito. Stan Musial suggests you go get a six of Maldito and Maldito light today. Pitch to Vernon. Got him! A 0-2 oh, curve, swung on and missed. One out. So five hits aside for both teams. Here's Keltner. Kenny is 0 for 3. He has struck out twice. Rashi deals. And the, he is the time run on as Rashi lost him. A full count ball almost in the dirt on the change and then will bring up Bob Kennedy. Bob is 0 for 3 with the strikeout and he is the winning run. Keegan on deck and if the game should be extended they would pinch hit for Benton. It is getting dicey. Silvera and Rachi have a few words. Vic Ground ball is short. Might be the ball game. Coleman for one. Over to Mize. And the lead is now ten and a half again. So the Indians threaten but don't do anything with it. And it goes down on the card. Six, four, three. And the Yankees' magic number is now 22. The fact that we're talking about magic numbers on the 26th of August just tells you how good they are. So three runs, five hits, and an error for the Yankees. Vic Rashi gets the win. He goes to 15 and 10. He throws a five hitter. Two runs, only one earned. He walked two and struck out seven. You're welcome, John. Al Benton, the Indians, two runs, five hits, and no errors. Benton, a complete game, five hit loss. Three runs, all earned. The homer to our digital dice MVP, Joe DiMaggio, which accounted for all three Yankee runs in the sixth. He walked four and struck out one. So the magic number is now 22. Let's play the rest of this Friday in baseball, shall we? It's the Tigers four, the Senators three. Gray goes to 12 and eighth. Eight. Welter Roth goes to three and five. Evans three for four with a triple. The Giants and Cardinals, you'll see that tomorrow right here on Retro Sports Network. The Giants pound St. Louis 13 to four. Larry Jansen goes to 15 and 10. Jerry Staley falls to 11 and seven. The Giants pound out 17 hits. Lafana with two of those. He was, goes two for five with his third of the year and drives in three. However, the Cardinals lose no ground as the Cubs, who are 45 and 80, beat Brooklyn at Ebbets Field 9 to 3. Rush gets the win. Uh, noontime tomorrow. Noontime tomorrow, noontime on Thursday. Uh, Hatton takes a loss, 14 and 8. Terwilliger, 2 for 4 with a homer and drove in 3. Red Sox beat the White Sox 7 to 2. Mel Parnell finally gets to 500. He goes to 10 and 10. White goes to 9 and 12. Ted Williams, 4 for 5. 
his 33rd home run of the year. So no, noon Pacific, or noon Eastern, nine Pacific. And the plan is tomorrow and Thursday, because we just did an episode of Digital Dice. St. Louis beats the A's 5-4. Ostrowski goes to 7-5. Scheib falls to 3-11. Chapman 2-4 with his 21st of the year. Phillies beat the Pirates 4-2. Kenny Heinzelman goes to 14-10. Whirl goes to 8-7. And Safel 2-3 with a double. And last but not least, Brad's not here. Cincinnati beat the Braves in Boston 12-5. Arat 2-8. Vern Bickford falls to 10-11. Cooper, 3-for-5 with his 15th of the year, and he drove in 6. So standings as we go. St. Louis, the game over Brooklyn. Four and a half now in front of the Giants. And you'll see the Cardinals and the Giants tomorrow at noon Eastern. And the Phillies are 8.5 back. And the American League all over but the shouting. Yankees are 78-45. The Indians ten and a half back. The Red Sox might sneak in and take second place. They played better, but it will not be enough. And so tomorrow's game, as we said, St. Louis and New York. And the game scheduled for Thursday would be Mr. Forsberg, the Red Sox, and the Tigers. So, of course, this time of year, everything is subject to allergies and what the wife wants to do for lunch because it is nice out. So the plan is tomorrow and Thursday at noontime, St. Louis and the Giants tomorrow, the Red Sox and the Tigers on Thursday. I'm Ron Juckett. Would you believe September starts next week on this channel? We'll talk to you tomorrow for more baseball. So long, everybody.